Hello everybody and welcome back to my vlog, to my channel and on the bench today we have something slightly different. So this is a clone of the NAM or name NAP, uh, what is it, the 140 clone as it says down there by LJM. Zoom in that, yeah, see that. And what it's here for today isn't to be tested as such. It's my test instrument. So this is a bit of a, um, a non-conventional way of testing for noise on my power supply. And what we got here is we have two Rigel DP832s and one of them is noisy. One of them is, well, it's a little bit hard for me to judge yet whether it's a ripply or a noisy thing, but we're going to do a few little bits of tests just to see how we can compare the two on the outputs and uh, see what we can find from there and then see if we can go about fixing it. Right, so without further ado, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to set the screen recorder off. All right, so we've got our Arta here, and I'm going to make sure we're on no power there. Now, first of all, we're going to look at the bottom one. This bottom one, uh, the boards inside it say 2018, if I remember correctly. Yeah, 2018. So I'm just going to check that we're actually in our... Um, system, the track set uh, enabled, so we've got a tracking arm, we'll turn that on, and as you can see, that's there, now we're not going to be doing a big long test, we're just going to look back at the screen again, and we are going to check that the volume is down, we're going to hit play, get ourselves in the right range, so we can see here, this with the power on, and I'm going to start up in the, the volume. And this is what we get. So I'm just going to put it 12. That'll do. All right. So that looks, and that looks pretty good. Everything's uh, quite way below, below 90. Um, so we're okay. And that's at uh, 32, and we're running at uh, 0.339, let's just say. Uh, milliamps, all right, 10 watts, nearly 11 watts we're using. So let's just take that out of there and stop that and go back to the power supplies. And all I'm gonna do is they're both set up exactly the same. Let me just uh, go into here, make sure that's on. So we've got to make sure our tracking's on, Tr tracking's on there. And uh, so they're both exactly the same setup, straight to 32 volts and um, and, there are, and they can go up to 3.2 amps each. And now we're going to just pop these leads in here. Pop them in. And turn this one on. Okay, does exactly the same thing. Now we go and look at our screen again. Turn that on. So now we're measuring. Start going up. Yeah, it looks pretty normal, right? But we went to 22 or something. It's not going up here. And look at that. And that's at 18.5 uh, dBFS. If I just cut it down there, we can look, we're using uh, one and a half, uh, one and a half hundred milliamps around. It's about five watts. But if I start going up higher, look at that. And if I try and take it anywhere to look, you see how bad that is? That's bad. That's bad, bad, bad. So, we have an issue. Uh, what can that issue be? Well, first of all, I thought to myself, well, let's have a look and we'll see if we can test out. Even though it wouldn't actually work out like this. So what I did was I crisscrossed them. You know, I put this one down here so it could run those channels. Did it the other way around. Just trying to see if I could see any differences, and you can't. So there's no point me going through that. Basically, what we've got is a an issue on the outputs. So let's um, let's get rid of these and turn them both off because we don't need those for the time being. 
and I'm just going to shut off Arta because I don't really need that for the time being and uh, I'll just stop that recording now so I thought well what can this possibly be going through everything else on here it all works I can have the power on I can stick a 8 ohm resistive load on there and I can make it power up to um, 3.19 amps. Uh, the same on the bottom. In actual fact, apart from, uh, let's say, a half a volt to a volt difference, which could be down to calibration, um, there's no difference in them. There's absolutely no difference in them. Uh, so this is a noise thing, I think. I mean, maybe somebody else can tell you. So we pull in AC from this, nothing but on just one. We got 1.7 volts. 2.2. 2 .2. 2 .2. 2 .2. 2 .2. 2.2. 2.1. 2.1. That's, you know. And then on this one. We got three nine. Oh, we've just one in there. Three nine. Four one. Maybe that's the better way for testing for AC. I don't know if it's going to work the other way around. It's AC. I don't see why not. Four volts. 0.9 volts. 0.9 volts. 4 volts nearly. Okay. So we seem to have a lot more AC on the output of this one than we do on this one. Maybe that's why that one's got the cleaner. Uh, cleaner output. Oh, what's the difference when I turn it on? 4.2, look on that, 4.2, 4.4 volts AC, 4.4 volts AC, and if I turn this one on, 1.3, should be the same on the other side, 1.3, 1, 3, 1, 3, now I wonder what it's going to be like on this, 4.1, 4.1, and if that's off, 4.1 still, what about this one here? Slightly less, no. Slightly less when the power's off, maybe. Right, so that's what we got. I've got to try and figure out now what on earth I can do about it. That's the wind behind me, isn't it? I'll have to knock that out of the building, brick it up or something. So what can we do about this? What is the fix for this? Well, I suppose I ought to go in there looking at caps. So let me just turn those off. Let's get that out of the way. And I'm just going to short out the caps. Uh, See, there are caps on the back side of this board. And if I remember rightly, when I was watching a um, video of Dave Jones's, um, EV bug, Dave, <sighs> I'm sure he said there were one, a thousand mic, a thousand microfarad. 
or one millifarad. And, uh, oops. Let me just get rid of that. Uh, yeah, a thousand microfarad. I think I've probably done that wrong. Now. So I'm just shorting these out because there's, like I said, there's caps on the back of this. And I'm going to use this little meter here because uh, this is a uh, inline circuit tester. Right? Uh, oh, sorry, in circuit circuit tester, and uh, it will let me see if the uh, well, it will give me an idea. It's not going to. It's, I think cost twenty quid. I think it was several years ago when I first bought it. And um, what it's going to do is it's going to give me an indicator. So we're going to take the bottom as a sort of reference because this one works reasonably well. For, as far as I can tell, it works reasonably well. So let's turn that on. Try and get this camera and see who guys can see this. Glorious sun coming in, a bit of my coffee. Right, okay. So what I'm gonna do then, is I'm gonna put this over here. I can't get it to go in the hole and clip in it, is it? And we're gonna put that there, put that there. All right, good cap with low ESR. All right, let's so get to see what that one is. And then we can do the same here. It's quite hard to squeeze these open. Uh, we got here, so good cap with low ESR. There we go. I'm going to do the same over here on this one. Check them all. Uh, oh, it's popped off. Come here. Uh, and this one says. Good cap with low ESR. Brilliant. All right, now let's do upstairs. Just uh, push that underneath there. Ah, good. Look at that, it's got 0 0.7, 0 point, nearly a 0 0.8. Good if the capacitance is less than 200 microfarads. I don't know. I don't know if that is the case. Let's try this one. Whoops, there you go. Uh, let's try that and go uh, up there. Well, this one says it's a good cap with low ESR. All right. I really do need to get a better one of these because I don't know how good this is or how good it isn't. Uh, so that's a 0 0.02, that's even better than the other ones down the bottom. Okay, well that's what it's saying, it's saying uh, good caps with low ESR. Now these are 25 volt scale on these. And, um, yep, so we've got 0. Point we got a 0 0.02 here, 0 0.03 here. Just a quick little look again here, because I don't have the ability to look back on the recording just yet. Just give myself that reference again in there. 0 0.04. So the only one that it this suggests could possibly be a problem is this, but this is, you know. It is what it is. Okay, so I've got this, the offending one, apart. And I was just basically taking a peek at these caps, see if you could see whether these, uh, these, these vent parts have been pushed up. Nothing, can't tell really from there. And can't really see a great deal from the caps down there. And the sniff test is this... 
There has been something that smells like it might have burnt in here at one stage. What it is at this minute in time, I couldn't really tell you. You can see the fan knot I've put in there, look. Uh, on the top here, it's looking about the same. <laughs> Sniff test, it's okay, you know, because you can tell sometimes. You know, uh, you know when you've had some of the burnt, you've been around a fire, you get burnt in your clothes and it can't kind of stink and burnt for a long time. Uh, yeah, but one place that it does is up here. And this sniff test up there it does tell me there's something wrong. And having a close look, um, a couple of things that are a little bit wrong here. So if I get that in here and zoom in, one of the things you see that cap is that as far as I can zoom in? You see that cap? That cap is uh, that cap's all pushed out at the top. I know you can't see it that well, but it is, and it stinks in there a little bit as well. That is not. Um, yeah, you can see that swollen. So there we have an issue with the cap. These are the ones underneath here. I don't know, but the problem is. That could be as well, a little tiny, it's not quite in focus, is it? Let's see if I can do that a bit better. No the problem. No, maybe not, I don't know. But the problem that we got is, look, see these uh, nuts? They're soldered. They are soldered in with the solder, clamping all that down on all of them. So, in order for me to get this cap out, I think what I'm going to have to do, I've got two choices. Because you see the, the back part there, I'm pretty sure I can solder to that. Well, I'll have to do a little bit of a continuity test on it and see if I possibly can. And if I can, I might just end up breaking the cap out and then uh, putting the leads onto those just to try and make my life a little bit easier. But that one definitely, you can see that much better now. That's from the three volt, uh, the five volt output. See, it's got a 16 volt cap there. I don't know, oh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it said if it was less than 200 mic, it should be all right, it might be all right. Um, but we can just see by that, that it's not. How much of that, it shares a ground. It shares the ground with this one. So how much of that could have been playing into here and being a problem, I don't know. Um, but I might see if I can just replace them all. I'm gonna try and get them at them in a better way. Let me, uh, let me just hang tight there. All right, I just turned it upside down, trying to get a sneak in there. I think these are one microfarad, I think Dave on his, uh, not one microfarad, a thousand microfarad, because I'm pretty sure I remember him commenting that it's a bit, that's that three volt, that's the five volt one again, these are the two thirty volts, but you see where it's all soldered on that, uh, so I suppose that's what I've got to do then, I've got to get in there, and get those out. Okay, right, well, let's just put that back to there. And what I'll do as well is I'll take these screws out of the board. And I'm gonna have to take that out as well because I may as well check everything when I can. Uh, with this like this, it means like busting off some elastic on some of these connectors. Taking loads of photos, of course, because um, that's how I know that I'm going to get things to go back when they're supposed to be. And, uh, yeah, I'll come back and have a peek at that once I get these boards out. <laughs> 